Epic episode of the Hyper Anomalous Esoteric Research Organization Podcast, also known as Hero Paranormal. My name is Ryan, the anomalous ambassador of the airwaves, broadcasting from just south of Area 51 at the base of La Madre Mountain. And we're going to be delving into some topics that just came across my desk, some things on the radar that, well, they just make you go, hmm. And uh, for those of you who have been keeping up with the podcast schedule, you know there's a lot of things that are making me go, hmm. Specifically, uh, Steadfast Defender 2024. We're going to get into that as NATO prepares for World War III. But before we do, if you haven't had a chance to head on over to HeroParanormal.com, please do for the price of a cup of coffee a month. You access all the content over there, there's a ton of it. Also, if you want to support the podcast but prefer to get something a bit more tangible, tangible product instead of just content, head on over to happinessmedical.com. Anything you buy over there helps support the podcast. And also, I'm going to be putting up some product for sale at spacewolfresearch.com. Be sure to head on over there. Or you can buy books at ryanpatrickburns.com. Uh, so there's a variety of places to get the goodies. Anyway, speaking of the goodies, we have got a super interesting scenario underway. And it's not just Steadfast Defender 2024, but um, I just got off a podcast with Ryder Lee, one of my favorite guys to talk to over at Raised by Giants. It should be dropping soon, but we go into detail on what the heck Steadfast Defender 2024 is. The short and small of it is, it is an exercise, a drill, one unlike we have seen since the Cold War. This is a big deal, folks. This is something that started January 25th. It's going to go until May 31st of this year. It's a lot of time. It's involving over 90,000 personnel. That's troops. And what's crazy is it's, it's massive. They're utilizing space technologies. They're utilizing aircraft carriers, tanks, helicopters, you name it. And here's the craziest part. You can't see anything about Steadfast Defender 2024 anywhere. No, you have to go to NATO. You have to go to the actual NATO website. And this is where a lot of this information is drawn out. But to give you an idea how huge, and I mean huge, this is, it is, it is going to be using air assets, including F-35s, F-A-18s, Harriers, F-15s, helicopters, a myriad of unmanned aerial vehicles, 50 naval assets, air carriers, destroyers, frigates, corvettes, and uh, 400 armored personnel carriers, more than 1,200 combat vehicles, 150 tanks, 500 infantry fighting vehicles. And yeah, this is all to basically do an exercise that is just in case we go to war with Russia. Now, they're not saying it's Russia. They can't officially say that, but it's revolving around countries that are in that area, and NATO has strengthened its defense and deterrence right there in that area. While Steadfast Defender has been in planning for quite a while, the exercise is happening right now, preparing for World War III. So, as many of you know, when these exercises are in play, oftentimes there's a big, long history of exercises being taken 
into consideration when actual events happen. A good example is in the Alto Nanay of Peru, when aliens were seen by villagers and these villagers were under attack by something they thought was an alien adversary. At the same time, there was a joint operation, including Space Force and other uh, organizations. I mean, all, all very similar. These, these, these joint ops, these exercises taking place right there on the coast um, from where this all took place inland. So you wonder that why is it that in close proximity we have exercises near places that these things take place? Maybe or maybe not. Maybe it's involved. Maybe it isn't. We find the same thing in a lot of scenarios, whether they be false, flag, or otherwise. But let's stick to the takeaway here. The takeaway is do something. If World War III is being practiced to this level, and they are calling this an exercise which marks an irre irrevocable return, irrevocable return. There's no turning back from this steadfast defender, quote unquote, exercise. The scale of NATO's exercise is immeasurable. And that's why it is basically irrevocable return. They're not turning back on this. They're pulling the trigger. They're going full bore. They're getting everything into position. They're doing everything they need to do, quote unquote, in case, in case, we have a World War III scenario with Russia. The takeaway is be prepared, get some extra water, get some extra food storage. That's my takeaway. If you need to get some extra cans of food, do it now. Can't hurt. Can't hurt. I'm telling you, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some solar generation to get a possible small generator, G diesel, propane, or otherwise. These are the small tools. The, 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 the stuff like that is what's going to make all the difference in the world. And I point out the issue we see going on over in Gaza right now. I mean, these folks didn't think this was coming down the pipe, but they probably saw that it was a possibility. It happened. And in, in Gaza right now, people are starving. They've been under siege for 100 days. And in that 100 days, all the food sources have been shut down. All the clean water has basically been shut down. It's gotten to the point where they are literally hunting dogs and cats in the streets to cook them up for nutrients. Okay, so let's not make this about Gaza and Israel, at least not right now, not, not this particular podcast. But they're, they're also, you know, that's, that's leading, lending some credence towards this World War Three scenario as well. That's not helping. I don't want to depart completely from the World War III scenario, but this is a really good example of what can happen in these situations where famine and starvation become the outcome of a military operation. So I would say, hey, this is a good time. When we see these head nods, when we see these quote unquote exercises, this is how the super class and power elite let other super class and power elite know that it's coming down the pipe. And in the world of conspiracy, coincidence is king. You know, a lot of people can say, well, that's just coincidence. Well, maybe, maybe. But when you start to see all of the exercises that are taking place when real events happen, you start to realize that it's not just coincidence, not just conspiracy, but it's more of a codex. It's more of a patterning and an understanding of what happens when certain things take place. I know everybody is talking about the movie Leave the World Behind, and with good reason, all kinds of awesome symbolism there and predictive programming possibly, but the bottom line is this. In the storyline, it is understood and discussed how superclass and power elites let each other know. They give each other a heads up when these things are coming. And they do so through symbolism, through certain head nods. And basically, this is what they're hiding from the majority of the populace. When you see these large-scale exercises taking place, these war schemes, and when you see the predictive programming, we're seeing a lot of that. Just yesterday, Elon Musk lost $55 billion dollars. Now, this is interesting because 55 is a number that has been used recently 
in accordance with Elon Musk, Trump, a bunch of other things. We just had Martin Luther King Day. And uh, believe it or not, the esoteric meaning, I'm going to tie this all together, spiritually, 55 signifies a period of transformation, adaptability, and embracing the flow of life. Well, that adaptability could come in many forms, even if it's bad things and some of the events we've discussed. However, you have to be open to changes. Spiritually, with the number 55, 55 is a big deal. And keep in mind that Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a speech in support of the striking sanitation workers at a Masonic temple in Memphis, Tennessee on April 3rd, 1968. This was the day before he was assassinated. And in his speech, which would become known as the mountaintop speech, Dr. King told those gathered that he had been to the mountaintop and had seen the promised land, adding the prophetic words, I might not get there with you. Very next day, he was assassinated. Now keep in mind that 55 years later, a ceremony for Tyree Nichols was held at the Mason Temple Church where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his final speech. Keep note of this number 55 as it relates to Trump as well because here is a candidate that just recently was facing 55 years behind bars. And that is wild. This is exactly what he was looking at 55 years behind bars. Now he is the leader in the GOP running. Things get more wild, where white nationalist hate groups have grown by 55%, according to The Guardian. And this is from the Southern Poverty Law Center, which warns of growing movement driven by fear of demographic change, many of which claim to be Trump supporters, not that Trump's racist, but that's just the number 55 again. And remember that Trump's approval rating, according to The Hill, was at 45% with a disapproval rating of 55. Also keep in mind that Donald Trump's 55 to 0 primary winning streak ended May 10th of 2022. So there's a lot of 55s here specifically focused in and around the Donald Trump camp. And I don't mean to make people into numerological, you know, you've seen the movie 23, don't go crazy with this, but they just keep coming. In fact, the poll back when they were comparing Trump and Obama, Trump's approval rating was at 37%, Obama was at 55%. That's all basically changed since then. But yeah, numbers are code. And for people that follow numerology and they know the esoteric numbers, such as the number 33, how it relates to space, how it relates to a lot of things, keep in mind that 33 is going to be coming up very soon in Paris as we have the 33rd Olympics taking place there. So we're seeing a lot of 33s and a lot of 55s. Now, historically, 55 and 33 are super important and esoteric. 55 is basically telling you, like, we've hit a limit, get ready to go with the flow. Why do you think the speed limit was 55 for so, so long? Some people have gone into serious uh, implications of that. But having gone through the fact that Martin Luther King gave his final sermon 55 years ago and gave us a warning and was assassinated the next day at the Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee. Remember Memphis and the esoteric meaning of Memphis. There's the Memphis Rite, of course, and uh, they very much know the meaning of 33. So, yeah, here we have President Trump, who was, for all intents and purposes, looking like an inmate. Now he's looking like he might be the future president of the United States, so... We have to go with the flow. And this is at a time where we've seen the largest transfer of wealth pretty much in our history take place. There's a lot that's being hidden from us and a lot that is going to manifest itself in the upcoming year, in my opinion. We have Bitcoin 
which is going to, well, it's going to half. It's going to split, according to many. And we are going to see another transfer of wealth. And with Bitcoin, this is a big deal because I have some insiders that have talked to me. I'll tell you, I'll just tell you straight up. There's some stuff I can't say, but I'll tell you what I can say. There is a very good likelihood that Bitcoin was made by our intelligence community. Whether you want to call that the CIA or otherwise, it is something that someone or something, some organization held on to a significant portion of Bitcoin when it was invented. Keep in mind, we've never found out who Satoshi is, the quote unquote inventor. Well, as Bitcoin goes up in value, it is alleged, and I've heard, that that initial portion, that initial run of Bitcoin that was held onto by its quote-unquote inventor, also goes up. And that money can be used quite literally for black budget projects because no one would have any way to track that via blockchain or otherwise. And this is one of the most interesting scenarios ever how to fund a variety of black budget projects through the founding of a cryptocurrency, which they are hiding the reality that we, when we buy into it, are also funding these black budget projects. But keep in mind that many insiders, including the one that I basically talked to, who was a very, very military and very involved with a crypto company, said that the future elite will be those who hold on to their Bitcoin. What does this all mean? Well, in the past 20 years, we've had massive amounts of different transfers in wealth. Big ones. We're talking not just through the pandemic, but also through crypto. Specifically, Bitcoin and other areas have also been affected. Recently, a judge came out who was looking over a case between the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, and the corporation that's also uh, serving as a holding house. Um, you can have a wallet there, Coinbase. It's actually where the most stand-up, you know, it's, it, it is the most stand-up location to hold your Bitcoin, Coinbase. They even, they even report to the IRS so these guys are legit. Well, Coinbase was in a court battle with the SEC, still is to some extent, but a judge deemed that Bitcoin is not a security because it has no guarantee of value. And this, this was a big thing when this judge sided on the side of Coinbase, according to many, I knew that many of the things I had heard were in fact true, that they are hiding something, and that is the fact that this transfer of wealth through cryptocurrency is not only something that's difficult to negotiate, but it's it, you got to go out on a limb, especially for old school old guys like me. This is this is something else. This is something new. This is something that can go to zero tomorrow. And if you're putting hundreds or thousands of dollars into it, that's a pretty big investment. But when you compare what's happened over the last 20 years and the possibility. And like I said, these allegations that this is funding all sorts of black projects and it is not only kind of backed by the U.S. government because it's in their best interest that it goes up because their portion goes up. But, you know, all kinds of people are going to tell you that what I'm saying is absolute madness. Now, I'm not saying it. These are things that I've been told, allegations that were told to me, and I'm just reporting on them. But if this is true, if the intelligence community created Bitcoin to more or less create something, offer it to the public, and make it grow in a way that they reap the benefits and rewards being able to invest and move money on the DL especially for black budget projects and things that are at the best, you know, in, in the most favorable interest for our government, then, you know, if it's in their best interest, 
it's in our best interest, right? If our government fails, we all fail. So something to take into consideration when it comes to Bitcoin. Now, on the flip side, if it fails, they could make this fail on purpose. That's the problem with digital currency is it's easier to pull the plug on it. It's easier to make it fail on purpose. And when it comes to a great reset, that's what some like the World Health Organization and the UN and those guys up at Davos, that's that's what a lot of people are purporting or alleging is that some want a new world order to arise out of a complete great reset. They want to destroy everything to build it back better. If that's the case, then you're hosed no matter what. But the conspiracy theory of Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, being a CIA or an NSA agent is a longstanding one. In fact, Bitcoin and its rise has sparked a lot of financial interest. And at the heart of this financial interest is an elusive property, right? This ability to abscond, hide, move money without knowing exactly where it came from, where it came from, where it's going, etc. And Satoshi Nakamoto is the individual or some say the group of individual or the NSA or CIA agent if you're to believe some of this information who started popularizing Bitcoin with online posts. He gave some Bitcoin away. He started it. It's a movement. And many people have tried to claim that they were Satoshi. And uh, it, it's been completely improbable. Many uh, have been outed as charlatans. But the mystery has basically continued. Nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. So what is involved with this conspiracy? Well, we have a lot. Uh, there is the escrowed coins theory, which is a theory that suggests that Satoshi Nakamoto, untouched coins, might be an escrow to be used in the future of some global or charitable purpose. I don't think this is possible. I'm much more along the lines of a black budget project, escrow. There's also the theory that it is a banking creation and that the central banks, the Rothschilds, etc. created the currency to shift the financial landscape in their favor. I'm not so sure about this one, but I think they got the head nod, you know, that the elites and superclass usually give to each other. They knew it was coming. They were probably offered to purchase some. Others believe that it is a uh, economic experiment and that it might be a grand experiment set up by economists to see how basically the markets would react to such a currency. This one's kind of, I think, not panned out. And others claim that it might be some AI creation, that Bitcoin's code is so sophisticated that it might have been created by an artificial intelligence. Well, I can, I can agree with this, but I have to put in that clause that I would say it's AI owned by some intelligence service, Mossad, NSA, CIA, something along those lines. And if it is a government project and it was created by a government agency, such as the NSA, the CIA, or something along those lines, it would make sense because they would want to either monitor the flow of this currency on the entire planet or be able to control it. And when you get the benefit of having it go up exponentially in value and utilizing that initial amount to fund black budget projects, these allegations start to make sense. Now, getting back to the numerology and what we've been seeing in mainstream narratives lately, we're seeing a lot of, uh, people at the very highest ranks of society being painted in ways that show how inept they are, how um, dumb they are, if that's a correct word, how they really don't have it together, they're naive, 
They're not really worthy of their post. We see this all over the place. We see it, you know, people paint Kamala Harris as being very ditzy, dumb, and who knows how she got there. Much like the predictive programming of Veep, the TV show. Remember the TV show Veep? Um, that that seems to play very much in line with uh, Kamala Harris. You know, how in the world did this woman get to this post? Well, by stepping and standing on everybody all the way um, like a, you know, cutthroat pit of vipers. But not very smart. Okay, so we have that. We have other cases such as the president in chief, the, the POTUS as well. They've got Biden. I mean, literally showing him as like an old man that can't even, you know, figure out how to get back up to the White House, has to be led across the lawn, um, needs to be helped and handled, falls over, can barely mutter out words. And um, again, completely inept and uh, completely not with it doesn't know what's going on, just happened to become president. And these aren't the only ones. We're seeing a lot of figures in high posts in the land being shown to be completely incompetent, right? Um, we have, the list goes on and on. I don't, all I'm going to do is make enemies with every name I say. But you get the idea that people, I've already named the two highest in the land, but yeah, all the way down the totem pole, we're getting people who are deemed incompetent. How in the world did they get there? They don't know any better. And they're making decisions. Oops, we did it because we didn't know any better. And all of this wealth transferring is going on. I argue they know very much. They know very well how things are working. They are speculating on a level that is far above that of the average individual. And while they may be incompetent in some areas of their lives, they have the resources and technical expertise to do something that the majority of humanity cannot do. They know how to take orders. They know how to hide things. And they know how to act dumb when it hits the fan. Oh, we had no idea. Oh, we, we had no idea this was taking place. I argue very much the opposite. They know exactly what's taking place when it comes to wealth when it comes to money, when it comes to the transfer of wealth, when it comes to the inner moving parts of the machine, they know what's going on. As an example, recently a ton of information has come out about paperwork having to do with $40 million spent by DARPA and uh, in collaboration with um, Dr. Jerome Unidad of Palo Alto Research Center, exploring the use of innovative aerosol technology that could be used in cave settings in the form of a field deployable spray device triggered by timers and movement detectors at critical cave entry points. If you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about $40 million spent by our government and the help of DARPA, which wanted to know and be involved with this, with a delivery technology being developed on the far chance, the odd chance that the United States ever has a conflict in China. They found out that, you know, if we have to send our servicemen or our scientists into these caves on the outskirts of China, which just happen to have bats which carry coronavirus, well, we want to be sure that we have immune boosting molecules and chimeric polyvariant spike technology and protein immune priming so we can lower the viral shedding of these bats on the far chance so if you buy that okay so 40 million dollars spent to create all this exotic technology to do these things on the far chance that some of our servicemen and scientists would be in caves with bats in China during a military operation, and they didn't want to catch any of the coronaviruses from the bats. So we're going to implement and figure out all this super exotic technology to do these things. There's 1,400 pages available online that goes into this and the countermeasures, etc. Well, if you believe that, then... I guess that 
mission accomplished, right? And guess what? All of this was outsourced to China in laboratories because it was not only cheaper, but obviously there's more loopholes to security. You can get the job done. And um, this was in 2018. Well, what happened between 2018 and now? I'll let you figure that out. But the theory is that this is how things work. In retrospect, you know what the people involved with this are saying? They're just saying, oh, we, we, well, obviously, look at these 1,400 pages. We're talking about, you know, immunomodulation formulations to benefit our servicemen and scientists if they just so happen to be in a cave with bats in China in case we go over there um, on some operation. And, you know, th these laboratory studies are basically for a good thing. These delivery, these delivery methods are for a good thing. And, um, you know, just the, the, the consequence and the coincidence is something you shouldn't pay attention to. But again, back to my statement, coincidence is the reality of conspiracy. If it's coincidence over and over and over again, then it's no longer coincidence. There is a collaboration of sorts taking place and something that could definitely fall into the camp of conspiracy when one person is conspiring with another for a greater goal or a greater narrative. It's less likely to be coincidence and more likely to be planned. So it's easy to act, you know, naive, not knowing or incompetent after the fact, but during the actual trial periods and the planification of a lot of these different things, I'm not going to pick anything in particular, but the reality is these people have the technical expertise, the resources, and admittedly, the goals working together to speculate some kind of outcome on these things. And it may not be exactly what they purport they are. I'm not saying anything different, but I if you if you follow my thinking, these people are not incompetent. They are following the same rule book, and it's not, you know, the same rule book we have. We take things at face value. They take things three layers deep. And what I mean is they're all utilizing the Hegelian dialectic. And they are combating a populace that is working on a singular level. So while we're playing checkers, they are playing chess. They have the technical prowess and they show interest in a lot of these emerging technologies, whatever they may be, as in the case of Bitcoin, something that might not be what it appears to be. So the way they go about hiding a lot of this stuff is with these tongue in cheek head nods between superclass power elites and those who govern the masses. And a lot of these things are hiding in plain sight. You know, there is the revelation of the method. A lot of people make fun of that. But no, you need it with a magic trick to get the prestige. You need to let people know what the grounds are for your trick, you know, ahead of time. You pull out the woman, you pull out the saw, you show them the woman, you show them the saw. They know it's not real, but they agree to believe it's real. And then you cut the woman in half you pull her apart. You have the prestige of the trick. They don't know how you do it, but that doesn't matter. You did it. And they witnessed it. And they were basically contractually involved with you doing that because they knew what was going to happen. And they sat around just to watch it. Well, the same is true here. These developers of these plans and these people who have this quest to do certain things, they reveal their method before. In fact, there is a massive book in a museum in London that outlines exactly how a lot of these things are going to play out, including World War III. Many believe that this is, oh, this is a work of fiction. It just happens to be right up until now. So what, what do you think the odds are that it's going to continue to be right as, as time progresses? If I were a betting man, which I'm not, I would bet that the revelation of the method is going to be the outcome.
So let's skip to the chase. There is a recent approval of BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF. That's an electronically traded fund owned by BlackRock containing Bitcoin. You heard it here. It's happened. This is reality. I argue that Bitcoin will soon be used to destroy the privacy individuals have with their wealth, which is something that has eluded the shadow government, the power elites, the super class, and possibly even the central banking system for generations. They now have the ultimate tool, cryptocurrency, something that can be traced, although we cannot, they say the blockchain is what it is, something that is discovered to provide incredible insight into the finances of all the world's civilians. Because if it was created by a creator and they know how it works, it's very likely that they can follow how it's spent, where the money goes, what's taking place with full transparency. So the way it's sold is exactly opposite of what it actually is. And if this is secretly a national security issue to begin with, and that Bitcoin is based on technology by its creator, who would obviously have the codex to figure out the blockchain and see where it goes, confirm all the reality of this inverted idea, which appears to be hidden, but is actually transparent in its most basic form, then the world elite have what they've always wanted. It's better than a credit card. It's better than a bank account. They know in real time, not only where you got your money, how you're spending your money, who you moved it to, what you're doing with it, how much of it you have, and at any moment, they can turn it off, take it away, and you can start at zero with a great reset. This is a great time to be alive because we are witnessing the collapse of very many different systems that are tangible. Tangible systems are going out the back door and we are exchanging them for cloud systems, things that don't exist, things that are held in the ether. The ether is not the ether. The ether is the desk of the super class and world elite. I guarantee you they have a tangible form of whatever you are intangibly trading. So now we have to be worried. We have BlackRock, which is one of the big three, which really the big three, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street are really one when you realize who owns what, and they all own each other. But you have BlackRock, one of the big three, making Bitcoin and a Bitcoin ETF legit. This is mainstream now. Bitcoin is no longer something that you're buying pizzas with or trading amongst gamers or, you know, using to buy, you know, uh, things that you don't want to let people know about off of, you know, the Silk Road online or the back rooms of 4chan. Bitcoin is now mainstream. It's an experiment that's gone mainstream. And this confirms, in my opinion, the rumors that it is the ultimate device with the digital dollar, cryptocurrencies in general, and Bitcoin, these are the ideal tools to basically know everything about everybody. And pretty soon, we will have to log in with a different ID system, which will have everything. It'll be one card. We've heard this. It's coming. I promise. One card. It's your driver's license. It's your credit card. It's your wallet. It's your passport. It's everything. And I argue that soon we will have to log into the internet utilizing some kind of login that lets them know who you are, that incorporates all the things I've talked about, including your social security number, your uh, FICO score, all into one, the ultimate way to run a spy lab. You know, if, if this is the American spy lab and cryptocurrency is accepted as an invention to from a coder, of course, and a code X of sorts to understand what Americans do. And although the dollar might be, you know, the last currency to uh, 
be within its grasp or the last one to fall, whatever you want to call it, the spy lab is complete at that point and they will know everything about everyone. Those are the allegations anyway, and it's hard to ignore. Well, as soon as BlackRock is involved, eh, I get a little bit worried because what is their goal? They seem to have goals that are very much in line with a, mm, dare I say, globalist. Nothing against the, you know, the, the planet. But um, they have goals that are very much in line with uh, some of the agencies that I fear the most, including the Bureau of Industry and Security. It's something that a lot of people don't know about. And it is, you know, an agency that deals with issues involving national security and high technology. And a principal goal for the Bureau of Industry and Security is helping stop the proliferation of weapons amongst well, anyone except their government, our government, and anything else, really, when it comes to imports and exports of the United States. And I argue that they very much want to regulate industry and security. And they very much want to regulate everything. They want to know where everything is going. They want to know why and who and how and we're finding this a lot with um, if you own a company or an LLC, there's a new law coming out, which is a transparency law. It's called the Corporate Transparency Act. And the CTA impacts millions of corporations and mostly small businesses, requiring ownership disclosure to the federal government. And basically, they want to know who the beneficiaries are. Interestingly, this does not affect larger corporations as much. Places like BlackRock, it, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street are not going to be affected as much by this transparency. It's just the small fish they want to fry. Fry can't talk today, apparently. But the purpose of it is to, in their opinion, prevent misuse of corporations and LLCs for money laundering, cybercrime, fraud, tax evasion, human and drug trafficking, proliferation of weapons. There's those weapons. Uh, of course, they always add mass destruction in their weapons of mass destruction and the financing of terrorism. This is what the legislation says. However, whenever you read these things, you got to remember where it's coming from. And you have to understand that whatever they put in there, it's as above, so below. So whatever they're trying to protect themselves is usually what they put in there to uh, label as the crime. So when I see this, I throw it through my conspiracy filter and I see that they are trying to make it impossible for the regular person to do these things while they actually are able to do cyber crime, fraud, tax evasion, trafficking, and all the proliferation of these other things under a veil of secrecy, which we no longer have. That's what corporate transparency is about. And we're losing our rights on a daily basis. Now, back during the Obama administration, he signaled that he would give the United States Commerce Department the authority over a proposed national cybersecurity measure that would involve giving each American a unique online identity, an ID. So basically like uh, a passport for the Internet, right? And this is basically the reality of what we're starting to see being implemented now, a national ID system for all of us. And it was dubbed the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace. That's what they called it. But how better to do that than recovering all information through the NSA you know, the NSA Listening Center up on the banks of the Utah Lake in Utah, just south of Salt Lake City. This is something that aims to create extreme knowledge of every individual, every civilian, 
They're housing and housing and housing the data. We have the same thing everywhere. Um, there are places like Switch, um, more corporate endeavors, but they're all in one way, shape, or form hoarding data, hoarding as much data as they can possibly hoard, waiting for this moment when quantum computers can read all the data in more realistic time frames. And at that point, we're hosed. What I mean by hosed is we will be unable to control or have any privacy over our personal lives whatsoever. Everything will be known. And as soon as something akin to Neuralink and the brain implant Elon Musk has been working on is apparently implemented and successful in the populace, then it's really on. And we've seen at Davos, we have Klaus Schwab who has said in 10 years, everyone will have a device in their brain, an implant in their brain, which of course they sell with all kinds of poofy talk, poofy language, unicorns and rainbows. Oh, you know, we'll be able to monitor you if you ever get sick and you're in the hospital. You'll be able to access stuff. Don't worry that you left your keys to your car at home or your wallet at home. You've got it all with you. You just tap the side of your skull and, you know, you're there. The bottom line is when these things come to fruition, when the World Economic Forum, the uh, World Health Organization, and um, other groups, think tanks, if you want to call them that, private organizations. Remember, the Bilderberg Group is not affiliated with any nation. These are the think tanks that we need to be worried about because these are the think tanks. These are the puppet string pullers. These are the puppeteers. These are the super class and power elite, which don't need a position, although they all have one. They are the ones who make moves. They don't have to be on the firing lines, but they have control of those who are on the firing lines, making these things come to fruition. Okay, okay. So I know what you're thinking. This is all part of the new world order. And this is, you know, this is something new we've never seen before. And how can we withstand this cyber attack where everything is going cyber and it's all cryptocurrency, digital money, fiat currency is over. We need the internet to do our jobs we need our phones, you know, to find out where we're going to use Waze or Google Maps or Apple, whatever. And, um, well, guess what? None of this is new, guys. None of this is new. There's always been new tricks of the trade throughout humankind's history. All of the rulers and power elite have utilized whatever tricks they have, whatever technology they have to somehow control the wealth, somehow control the information. And remember that information data is wealth. You know, that's why we have Mossad, the CIA, the NSA. That's why if you know what your enemy is doing, he's no longer an adversary. He is something that can be used for your own benefit. And this has always been done as far back as mankind has been able to chisel imagery on rocks and have some sort of semblance of history and storyline, we know that our rulers, those elites, the Elites, those who are in direct lineage with the creator god El, they have always incorporated the belief that they are somehow better than the masses. Whether that's true or not is debatable. However, these bloodlines have always utilized every tool they have dispensable, available to them to control the, the masses. That's why it's called government. In Latin, govern is control. Ment is mind. It's mind control. Governing your mind. And if you can govern someone's mind, you got them. Especially, now think about what we just said, the implementation of of a chip, like a Neuralink, implanted in your brain, it's over at that point. You're literally cattle at that point, which can be controlled. The ultimate MK Ultra mind control device would be having everybody chipped 
And, oh, this guy's about to do that. Ah, get rid of him. This guy's about to do that. No, he, he can't do that. This woman's about to do that. And tracking, the tracking ability. So my suggestion is don't be scared by the technology. It is very likely that humankind has encountered multiple catastrophic events that have started us off at zero again. Great resets, right? Cataclysms. And these cataclysms or these great resets, whether made by the power elite, the ruling class or not, these ancient cataclysms, we know of about nine that rocked the world. And each time we bounce back. And these, these ancient cultures around the world have passed down their tales of these devastating disasters. And guess what? It's very likely that different eras in human history have had ancient technology that may have been far in excess of what we're dealing with now. And somehow we bounce back. So don't freak about the uh, technology that, oh, this is the end all catch all. This is as, as technologically advanced as humankind will ever be. Now, the rise and fall of humanity has happened over and over again. And these catastrophic events are what deem humanity so able to get over these things. This is why you can't under, underestimate humanity. Written records do not exist for a lot of these time periods. Yet, you can tell that there are definite answers on what may have happened. There's been gigantic volcanic eruptions. There have been floods um, between the years of 535 and 536. A series of serious climatic events took place that easily could have been called cataclysm with catastrophic consequences. And, you know, we've run into this over and over again. So don't be freaked out. The power elite, the super class, have always used natural phenomena, man-made phenomena, technology of any type to govern. Governing is the key. And we see a lot of predictive programming with this upcoming movie, Civil War. And we've seen the trailer, you know, Texas is the first one to secede from the Union with California following suit. And interestingly enough, what do we have going on in the news right now? We have Texas going at it with the the feds, right? We have Biden angry at Texas for the border issue. And it's playing right into line with everything that we've seen predictively programmed, even if it is by just the trailer of the upcoming movie, Civil War by A24 Productions. So this is how they do it. The bread and circuses, they're telling us what's going to happen, revelation of the method. Then they do it. And then we see the magic trick and Wow, it's something new and exciting. No, it's nothing new. It's nothing exciting. These are pictorial representations through the mass media, which they inject into society. And then we are more likely to go with the flow. We're more likely to utilize that number 55, as it's known in the esoteric, to be ready for change, more malleable, more... Um, more going with the flow. We're not, we're not going to be swimming upstream, doing our own thing. Hey, it's just how it is. You just got to go with the flow. Well, you don't. These flows, by all historical accounts, are propagandized media. They're bread and circuses. And we believe that we have to function within their constraints, which is not true. Just because everybody is doing one thing doesn't mean you have to do that. You can do something else. And there's many ways, many people have interpreted how to work outside the bounds of these regulations that are coming down the pipe. And it's all about double standards because I guarantee you that the elite, the, those who govern us are not playing by the same rules that we are playing by. The rules don't apply to them. Those at Davos, which are saying that we need to eat bugs and eat vegetables, guess what? They're eating steaks. They're eating steaks and the finest wines and champagnes you can imagine while they're telling us we will have to eat vegetables and eat bugs. Are you starting to see the double standard? They want full control 
because they don't see us as being at their level and they are in an advanced working group of individuals who see that in each other and they are willing to work with each other at the highest levels to keep us down. And it's vital and necessary to keep us down so that they can live at the level they're used to. They have lifestyles that demand control and demand the working class below them to raise them to a level that is far beyond the spectrum of what I would consider opulence. And this has been documented. It, and it's not just documented in obvious places that we can see. The Vatican archives have documentation of many of the world's past relics. And it's obvious that technologies have existed in the past. I've heard through those who have, I have not been in the Vatican archives yet. And I've heard from those who have had that opportunity that even the Vatican archives are compartmentalized. So if it's, if there's something you're interested in researching, they will allow you into that zone compartmentalized in a certain sector, but not other areas, much like the government itself, much like the military, and much like the labs that people hear about underground. There is such thing as underground laboratories, and they are very compartmentalized, and they're compartmentalized for obvious reasons, much like the Vatican archives. You can know about this, but you can't know about that. You can know about that, but you can't know about this. You can even know about this and that, but not how it ties in and interacts with the other. And if you can compartmentalize these systems enough, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, then you are a master puppeteer. And in the Vatican archives, there has been an array of technologies, relics, etc., and very real specimens of past human artifacts, even skeletons. They claim to have uh, things that are otherworldly in the archives, technologies that are exotic. And of course, real specimens, albeit dead specimens. I haven't heard of any live specimens, but that's, that's not, you know, meaning that it's not possible. But I've heard of dead specimens of actual entities that are not human. Whatever that might you know, lend your mind to go into strange arenas of speculation. But whatever whatever you think of is probably what they're insinuating. These allegations that were told to me were from a verified individual. He's been there. He's done that. Been within the bounds of what we're talking about. And if, if there is non-human remnants in the Vatican archives. And these are archives that go on for over five miles underground to give you an idea what we know of. Then there is documentation of cataclysms, catastrophes that rocked the world and proof that there were technologies that may have surpassed what we have today. So don't be pulled into the magic trick. Don't agree to the contract of how they pull it off. They've already given us the tidbits, the trailers, right? They've told us how it's going to go down. Many, even in the conspiracy world, know how it's going to play out. And still, people sign on to the revelation of the method. So a lot of these groups, think tanks, power elite, etc., believe in many of the texts, early documents, pre-rabbinic documents where they were actually Palestinian Jewish texts. I said it. Palestinian Jewish texts. Those are things we don't see anymore. And namely, the Apocalypse of Abraham. When you look at the Apocalypse of Abraham and the societies, think tanks, and people who hold this dear, they're not only trying to form the Apocalypse to follow the instructions, but they're utilizing these texts to actually determine 
how it would go down. This is uh, very important when you're trying to promote the Christian knowledge of how these things were denoted. And these translations which have been made of these texts are sometimes difficult to understand, but in most cases, they have a general idea, an account of Abraham's trance vision described in Genesis. It is a favorite theme for apocalyptic speculation among the elite, and maybe they're just reflecting on it because they see that that's how it is, or maybe they see how it is and they want it to play out that way. Or there is a third option, that the book actually is a marker, a reality, a justifiable text that just by accident or coincidence is um, real. It's reality. But uh, the, the bottom line is the apocalyptic part opens with a divine command to Abraham to prepare a sacrifice with a view to receive a divine revelation concerning the future. I know it sounds wild, but under the direction of this angel, which I believe is something along the lines of non-human intelligence, he accomplishes the sacrifice. And at this point, Azazel, the fallen archangel and seducer of mankind, intervenes and attempts to dissuade Abraham from his purpose. Well, here's the kicker. There's always a choice, and there are Gnostic features in this ancient text. And significant Gnostic emphasis laid upon right and left. You know, the right-hand path, the left-hand path. Especially in the apocalyptic representation. The right side, of course, being the source of purity and light. The left, impurity and darkness. An ancient idea. And very much focused on the dualism. As above, so below. The category of light and dark. This is traced all the way back to ancient Zoroastrianism. So guess what, guys? We always have a choice. There's always a choice when it comes to the apocalypse. Just question the narrative, figure out what it is you want, and do what is needed to make that happen. Sometimes it's as simple as not playing the game. If you don't want to lose at the game, don't play the game. Sometimes the answers are that simple. Anyway, guys, you get the idea. If you haven't had a chance to head on over to HeroParanormal.com, please do. We're adding a bunch of stuff to the website. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can access all kinds of content like this over there. If not, you're missing out. Also, if you want to support the podcast, head on over to HappinessMedical.com. Anything you buy there supports the podcast. Until next time, keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, but don't forget to take a look around. Come blast off in my time machine Third eye feeling like an e Blast Blast off Blast off Blast off Blast off Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like an Evi. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off.